Hi everyone. Over the past year, you have been sharing with us the experience that you have been through, whether it's business recovery, burnout, talent crunch, how you navigate through challenge after challenge to bring you into 2023 and preparing you for 2024. So we are bringing the video series back, starting with an all important topic, balance. We'll be speaking to leaders across Asia Pacific who will be sharing with you how they strike a balance, maintain mental fitness and thrive in a challenging business world. Big Eye, thank Hi. you so much for joining us today. Now we are here to talk about a toolkit for business travelers because the good news is business recovery is strong, the economy is bouncing back uh, to a certain extent. Uh, however, the demands of work, de demands of having that work-life balancing post-COVID um, can be quite detrimental to one's energy. Can you tell us about the three R's of your recovery toolkits? Of course, thanks for having me here my favorite topic. So the three R's are recognize, recharge, and reset. Can you tell us a little bit about recognize? What does it, what do you mean uh, when you're talking about recognize? Yeah. yeah. For me, that's probably the most important part when it comes to well-being. A lot of people, including myself, find it really hard to sit with, to even recognizing how I feel, right? when we feel, you know, anxiety, worry, fear. It's very rare that we actually sit with our emotion, we just react. So recognizing is really sit with our emotions. Wow, I'm feeling angry. Why is that? What are the signals my body is trying to tell me? So recognizing how I feel, recognizing what signal is my body telling me. Really, at the end of the day, emotion is my body say, Hey guy, I need you, I need help. That's recognizing. And why is it important to recognize? Because naturally, we try to be um, positive about everything, mm. we try to suppress mm. uh, any distraction, yeah. uh, especially at the time of stress when it comes to business. Yeah, so one of the myths when it comes to well being is positive, feeling positive is great feeling negative is bad. No, 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 no. We believe both positive and negative emotions are Im equally important, right? Uh, when we feel happy, great. When we feel on top of the world, amazing. But equally important is when we feel sad, when we feel like demotivated, when we feel irritable, right? Then that's a very important moment, what our body is trying to tell us because that's when our body needs something from us. Yes. I, li I like the fact that you talk about listening to our body mm. uh, so that we can align our how our body is feeling mm. with what our minds are thinking. So coming on to the second R, mm. can you explain a little bit further about the recharging process? Sure. So recharging is really basically toolkits that we have. When we, after recognizing what my body needs, what are some of the go-to for us? And sometimes I call that my personal charging stations, right? Where do I go when I feel my body needs certain things? So there, there are three parts, uh, three things that we would like to discuss today. So three things, right? First thing first, um, forecast your energy. You, it's useful to actually understand or, or look at a calendar what what are the activities ahead of you that day then you dispense your energy accordingly right if you have five back-to-back -back meetings then don't don't go out for a big night out the day before right but um, if you need like a small little uh, coffee break in between the meetings do that so dispense your energy accordingly right so forecast your energy second part is where um, your personal charging stations so meaning there are things that you go to when your body needs something. So, so, so there are a few things you could do really. So one of the things that you, know, you always fall back to is what I call your tribe, right? Your tribe could be a friend, a colleague, family member, your child, anybody. Because at the end of the day, connection is the most important thing, right? That is a, the world's longest um, research on happiness uh, started in 1938. And this year is actually the 85th year. 
is happening in Harvard. They interview about 700 people all around the world and they interview them every two years. And one thing that they find, um, what makes people happiest is the connection. So make sure that you have a, a, your, your own tribe, uh, regardless who they are, right? So go to your tribe. Some people have, have a routine. So when I travel, for example, I make sure I have my face mask, I have my look of food, right? I love talking to the taxi drivers from the air, uh, airport to the hotel. Um, so any routine that you love, and I love my mindless TV. I love my hotel, hotel room TV, right? All the BBC and CNBC and stuff. I don't watch all those at home, but those are my routines. So have a routine. Um, movement, you know, I know that all of you are busy business travelers. So when you go to go to the lo a local city, if you have meetings, how about uh, m meet and walk, walk and meet, right? A lot of people do that nowadays. Uh, a lot of people do uh, men mentor walk, right? I mentor with mentor somebody locally and I walk with them. Walk in the nature while talking about business, right? So, so that's useful as well. I love a lot of these ideas mm. because, you know, when you are doing business travel, sometimes you don't really have a lot of control yes. because our time is our client's time. That's right. So what I like about what you said earlier, particularly the first point in terms of forecasting your energy, mm. if you know that, let's say you have your way for five days mm. and the first two days are pretty much quite intense, mm. is to perhaps dial down on the social uh, part of the activity yeah. and then dial it up in on lighter day. So that's absolutely what I love. The other, the second point that resonated with me is the fact that absolutely, especially when it comes to uh, when we're doing a presentation. Mm. So sometimes we might not be as confident or we might be quite nervous mm. about the deal. So mm. leaning into your try, yeah. knowing who can give you that confidence boost yeah. is amazing. Yeah. The third thing that resonated with me is really around the, the routine part. Mm. So if I am a more of a, you know, I'm a, I'm a jogger. Mm. So if the city, you know, the weather-wise, yep. time-wise yep. is suitable for me to jog around, yep. perhaps that is the best way for me to you know, reset yep. my energy yep. and get myself ready. Yep. Some people do it through music, yep. some people do it through stretching in the room and so forth. So there are many, many options out there. Yep. But I think what I what I do take away is the fact that we we have to be in control. We have to take a proactive step. Absolutely. In implementing the recharge yes. instead of paying playing the reactive step in yep. terms of responding to a stressful situation. Exactly. So what about the reset? Mm. What is Why do we need to reset? Mm. And what are some of the ways that we can do to, to achieve that reset? Mm. It's really important, you know, when you're at a stage where you feel that you're you're feeling these positive emotions and you have a sense of control, then you have your well-being intact. And it's important to have that well-being sustainable, to keep that sustainable. So waiting till your batteries are empty is not helpful, right? Make sure that, so that's where resetting is very important. So really remember how it feels. Remember that sensation when you are fully in control, right? So remember that sensation. And when it comes to resetting, we would like you to have it as a habit. And you know, a, a well-being habit, we're not asking you to do meditation for 60 minutes. I've tried that for like 10 years, right? And I still feel at it. Um, do something that is part of your routine or part of your habits already, right? So four steps when it comes to resetting. So first step is queuing. So have a queue of, you know, anchor your habit within the habit you're already doing, right? Um, second bit is routine make sure that it's in your routine and make sure that it's a habit even just three to five minutes every day and i'll give you an example so i do a gratitude practice with my son every night so before he goes to bed we will take turns in the family to say what is one thing you're grateful for today that's like two minutes practice every day right so routine make sure it, it becomes a routine then it will become a habit for you right and Another thing, the third thing is very important to reflect, right? Um, 
how did it go? How was my energy level today? How was I feeling throughout the day, right? Try to make sure that, ah, okay, I did this well. Oh, I, yeah, I could have done this differently. So reflect that and try to do this routine for a week and adjust accordingly. Last but not least, celebrate. Don't forget to, you know, pat yourself at the back and say, I did a great job this week or today, right? Because I managed to I manage to be in control of how I feel, right? I'm able to be in control of my well-being and taking care of myself. So celebrate, be it, you know, a, a cup of Milo dinosaur if you're in Singapore, but a glass of wine for some of for those of you who drink, celebrate. Why is it important for all of us when it comes to the reset piece mm. to do it in baby steps? Mm. Look at the simplest form of building a habit. The last thing you want to do is to set yourself up for failure, right? A lot of us, we know, okay, we should go to the gym every day, we should. The word should is very detrimental because it's not setting us up for success, right? We should, do med we should meditate every day. We should go for a run every day because it's good for us. We should eat green vegetables every day, that's what I tell my son. But the word should makes it very hard right for our brain to say yeah i know i should but it's really hard to do so take baby step so that you set yourself up for success